Hey everybody, it's Chris Demetric here from TDW and I'm up in the kitchen because I have a combo video today. It is going to be a little bit of some cooking and a little bit of some woodworking. And one of the things that I have always strived for is to be creative. And one of the things that I do is I try to create or make something in the kitchen once a month that I've never made before, that I've never cooked before, whether it be a different food from a different country or a different style or fish or something like that I've not tried before. So I, I look for that and every month I just try at least to do something different. So with that being said, I search out YouTube looking for unique different things, watching a lot of street food videos and stuff like that. But I came across something called a tamagoyaki. A tamagoyaki is the Japanese rolled omelet. It is actually a special pan that you get called a Makiyakanab, and this is what it looks like. It is a square pan in which you pour a thin layer of egg and roll it, and then pour another layer and roll it until you make these little blocks, which look like almost like a um, a brick of sorts. And um, part of one of your uh, techniques for using is to have a press that will square up and true up the ends of these because you want that final brick to be sliced into little pieces so you can put it in a, a lunch pail or generally have it as a protein um, on a side dish on another you know dinner that you might be having so I made one quickly but I realized I really need the special press to really make it look nice and be able to load it with layers of different flavors so but let's head down to the shop so we can make this special press tool. Then we'll head upstairs and show you how to make the rolled omelet or a tamagoyaki. Tamagoyaki! So down in the shop I went ahead and uh, grabbed this piece of oak that I got from an old drawer that you can see from an earlier video. And using the pan to create the dimensions for the length and the width and then uh, bring it over to the table saw and rip it down to, to size. All right, so to make it fit a little better, I'll just round the corners over on the sander, and then we'll make a couple handles that'll go across the board to be able to lift it. I find that using the gripper is a safe way for me to uh, cut those thin strips on the table saw. I'm just gonna use some CA glue with some activator to attach them. And then I just cut off the ends on the bandsaw. To make it food safe, I'll just finish it with a little mineral oil. You know, like they say, you can't make a Japanese rolled omelet without breaking a few eggs. So let me whip up three of them. Again, this is the second time I've ever made one and the first time with the actual tool itself. So I'll season up the eggs and get a little piece of paper towel I'll use to spread the oil, wrap it up nice, and get the pan really hot, ready to go. So I'm starting with a little oil and using my paper towel to sort of spread that out. Some new pans with the Teflon is really good. And you're going to pour your first little bit of layer of eggs in there. You don't want too much on there. I kind of did a lot here for my first layer. And you let it cook up a little bit before you get to rolling it. Most of the other videos, they would use chopsticks to turn them. Uh, I don't happen to have any, so I figured I would use this, and it really was semi-successful. I think my second one was a little bit better after this. But um, that first part, you want to turn it and bring it to the corner so it's sort of brick-shaped. I think I did pretty good, and I think that tool will help out for sort of squaring everything up. All 
right, I'm getting everything ready for that second layer, and I'll pour a little less this time. And uh, make sure that when you pour your egg, that you don't want the first one to burn, so make sure you lift that up and get the egg underneath it so it doesn't burn that first, uh, first section. So now, in hindsight, I realized I waited too long to flip that because the egg had dried. You really want to flip it while the egg's still a little moist on that layer. But now I chewed it up. I'm using my third layer and final one. I think it'll be about the right size. Getting the egg underneath, waiting for it to set up. And while it's still a little moist, then I'm going to flip it. So you can see it's almost too dry in this one. But it worked out nonetheless. Squaring it up and putting it on the pan. When it's wet, it'll stick together a little bit better, but not too bad my second attempt here. And now I'm going to repeat the process and uh, going to add a little cheese in between layers here. And see, I let that salt and pepper it season up a little bit and flipped it with the pan. It seemed to work pretty well that way. Chewed it up, put my second layer down, and Made sure that uh, it wasn't as cooked this time, and then threw on some cheese, which helped it to stick together a little bit better. Chewed it up, and then my last layer, the last little bit of egg, and flip that bad boy over, and chewed it up with the uh, the tool we made. And so here they are. These are my tamagogaki, or the. Uh, uh, Japanese rolled omelet. I think they came out pretty well and I think what's so like anything if you do it more often you're gonna get better at it. I see most people use chopsticks to turn it and I think that might be better than a spatula. But anyways traditionally I think what the Japanese will do is they'll then uh, take these little bricks once they're cooled off they'll slice them up and you'll put them in your lunch or have it as a side dish with another meal. Uh, they seem to enjoy eating eggs at you know regular uh, meals, dinner time, it's always added to something. So that's my little experiment with tamagoyaki. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let me slice this up and we'll give them a try and you know, they're egg and cheese so we know what they're going to taste like but it's a neat way of kind of uh, trying something a little different and unique and maybe if you are uh, a metal worker you can make your own pan and not have to order mine but I think I bought mine on Amazon for like 21 bucks so Definitely worth a try. Anyways, thanks for watching. This is a different kind of video. This is Chris Demetric from TDW Cooks. And uh, we'll see you on the flip side.